name is Hannah Kay and I'm here from GAPS Actuarial. And as an alumna of Imperial College, I'm very pleased to welcome you to this evening's Actuarial Careers event, which we have organised in conjunction with the Imperial College Business School. This is our first Actuarial Networking evening at Imperial. Previously, we've sponsored some more traditional careers events and careers fairs, so this is a bit of a new experiment. And it's out of season, so hopefully this gives you a slightly different opportunity to meet some of the actual employers or employers to meet some of the candidates that you might have missed out on during your traditional milk rounds. All new ventures are risks, so we hope that this evening is a success and a very useful networking opportunity for you. Certainly, as the word spreads, we hope the event goes from strength to strength every year. I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Geraldine Kay. Dr. Kay founded GAPS almost 20 years ago. She is a qualified actuary and is still active, is, and is still active within the actuarial profession. <coughs> I'm extremely proud to be sponsoring this event for two reasons. I'm the proud mother of an Imperial alumna and owe a debt of gratitude to Imperial for her education. And I finally, I would like to um, thank my e-marketing manager, Hannah, for organizing this event and jumping out of her box as an e-marketing manager because career fairs were not part of her job spec. She's gone way beyond what I would normally expect. I would also like to thank Ice. Is Ice here? Can we give a big hand to Ice? Because <laughs> without her and Tim, Tim, I've lost Tim as well. Oh well, you'll have to tell him to thank Tim. Without her and Tim from Imperial and their cooperation and help, this event could not have gone ahead. I'm proud to be an actuary and for the wide-ranging opportunities that the qualification has given me. I am and always will be a traditional actuary and the original motto of the profession was that each man is a debtor to his profession. Um, I've always taken this very seriously and am delighted with this event to be able to help the next generation to enter the profession. I'm, I must stress here that I'm giving a personal view and in this presentation I do not represent either the actuarial profession or Imperial College. So I know that the um, official motto now of the actuarial profession is making financial sense of the future. So I've got that in, and I hope that I won't get struck off for being naughty by going back to the old motto. Now, I've been asked to explain what is an actuary. This is really an impossible task, other than a formulaic, circuitous statement that it's someone recognised as such by a recognised actuarial body. All I will say is normally you will know one if you see one. I use the term normally because sometimes qualified actuaries drop their designation letters and don't publicise the fact. Many of you, especially those sitting at the back, are recruiters of actuaries and therefore know what you're looking for when you recruit. But I'm sure that if I took a straw poll, which as we're limited in time, don't panic, I won't be doing, um, you would all answer the question differently. There are, however, some common features. A very strong numerical bent, what I perceive as the most important, an ability to distinguish the essential from the inessential, or as I tend to say in the office, being able to see the wood for the trees. They're clever and innovative, and once qualified, they, um, find that they gain a long-term perspective. And again, another one that is very important is tenacity. Tenacity, 
is, um, <coughs> is essential as the exams are demanding. To be accepted as an actuarial student demonstrates that a person has the ability to qualify. Nobody would have recruited you as an actuarial student if they were expecting you not to qualify. The two reasons for failing are one, that the student learns well how to fail and then gives up. The other is they give up, albeit for some wholly justifiable reasons, and such people are often referred to as unqualified successes. What you must remember is if the, that if you give up, you can't qualify. So that is the only reason for not qualifying. Here is um, a slide that I'm afraid I poached from someone else's presentation because I thought it was pretty and I thought it was what I was expected to show you. But I've got a feeling that most of you probably know more about what exams you have to sit than I do because I qualified more years than I care to tell you, more years ago than I care to tell you. Now, traditionally, actuaries have worked in investment, insurance, and pensions industries. But increasingly, actuaries play a valuable role in areas such as healthcare, banking, business management, and risk management. Many are now in training, including as lecturers, and you've got Tony here, good example there, or even in recruitment, people such as me. Actuaries also help governments and others formulate public policy. There are always new avenues for actuarial talents, because actuaries are also clever and innovative. I've been to many conferences in previous recessions, and that really shows my age when I say previous recessions rather than previous recession, um, where speakers have spoken gloom and doom for the prospect for actuaries. And I've stood up saying actuaries would find new avenues for their talents and that actuaries are addictive. When an employer employs one, um, they, they find that they want more. I've been proved correct. Look at the vast increase in numbers of actuaries who are being used in areas previously unthought of. Because so many organizations rely on the specialist skills of actuaries, they're normally very well rewarded. The actuarial profession is still relatively small, well respected, and well paid. And the type of work you do can definitely take you beyond the norm. There, in fact, has been a recent um, survey in America that said it was the least stressful and most satisfying of all the um, professions that they surveyed. Your qualification will enable you to earn high salaries very quickly. But remember, once you qualify, how you proceed will depend on your own qualities. So it gets you there quicker, but once you've got there, it's up to you. Ideally, you should be studying for a degree with significant mathematical content. You should have good communication skills because you need to be able to explain what you're doing to other people and not just to actuaries. Uh, you must all have heard um, plenty of actuary jokes um, about how backroom they are and how they can't speak to other people. It's not true anymore because those sorts of people just don't get actuarial jobs anymore. So the new generation of qualified actuaries have very good communication skills. And because your own future will be wide open, you'll also be the type of person who's up for anything. Legal, of course.